confessing what heaven says about you, not denying it. And think of the absurdity. The God of the universe is saying who you are now. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Please. What? That is stupid. You know what I mean? It's stupid. It's like, he's, you know, no, I bet. Who's that dude in Back to the Future? McFly. McFly. It's a McFly situation. Okay? I challenge you. You get in his presence and you write down what he's saying about you and you confess it until it's no longer uncomfortable and when you believe it. You know what I mean? And then keep doing it after that because enemy hates to hear it. <laughs> if the Antichrist is against the anointing, he then knows how to separate Jesus from his humanity so that we will always view ourselves as sinners and never live up to the model that Jesus Christ has set for us. Now let's finish in Romans 6, 10. The Antichrist is just annoying. It's one of those demons that, like, it, it, I don't know if you've ever encountered it, but just let me give you a heads up in case you do, okay? So the Antichrist spirit, when it manifests, it mocks God. It's the only demon I've found that acts like it has no fear. Huh, Gigi? Mine. It, it'll laugh at you. Okay? And it'll act like it's not going to go. Mm -hmm. So you might as well stop. It really does. And, and it begins to play with your mind. You begin to doubt. Well, is it going to go? <laughs> it, it'll start doing mind games on you. And you just have to remind it of its future. Like a fire. You're going to burn forever. And while you're burning, I'm going to be enjoying heaven. You know what I mean? The Bible says that the, the Lord says on his throne that he mocks his enemies. And so the Antichrist spirit seeks to substitute, right? So that's why if, if you're laughing in the presence of the Lord, he'll laugh back at you. So you have to written. And I'm gonna, you know, he has really gotten an inroad in the church. I'll never forget, there was this guy that he would uh, get under the influence of the Holy Spirit. And he would, you know, just go out. And, he just, you know. and the pastor's wife thought something was wrong with him. I'm like, are you born again? Do you have the Holy Ghost? Have you ever, what, what, are you, what are you talking about? This is the Holy Spirit laying him out. He's doing a work. You know what I mean? But it's against the anointing. And another manifestation of the Antichrist spirit in the church is don't get you know, too carried away that hyperfaith stuff and all that. You've got to have balance. They tell you that. Because the Antichrist wants to keep you at an even kill. Because if you're not radical, you're no threat whatsoever. Whatsoever. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm, I'm getting mad just thinking about it. We better move on. Let's get back in the Word. Okay. So Romans 10, it says, For the death that he died, he died to sin once and for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. So if Christ died once and for all, you died once and for all. Therefore, now why does he think that? When you see therefore, you can understand what it's there for, right? And so the, the, the reason we can reckon ourselves dead to sin is because Christ died once, and is alive. We died once, represented by the water of baptism, and we are raised from the dead. So he says, therefore, uh, likewise, oh, I lost my train of thought. Oh, here it is. Do not let sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in its loss. Are you king? Yes, I am. For this reason I was born, for this reason I came into the world. Right? Do not let sin reign or be king in your mortal body. We have a king of kings. And he lives in us. And it's a lie to tell yourself that you have to succumb to, to temptation and do what your flesh wants to do. That's a lie. Well, I can't help it. I've always had this problem. My mom was the same way. You know what I mean? I used to lie about Irish in my blood. That's why I'm such a jerk. <laughs> you know? And so he said, do not let sin reign in your body. And do not present yourself or present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the 
dead. And your members as instruments of righteousness to God. Now listen to this. Let's not water it down. For sin shall not have dominion over you. You're not under the law, but under grace. What? What does that have to do with anything? It's like a PS. You're not under the law anymore. You're under grace. Let's look at that. This last man, man, man. I love this. Okay, Colossians. I'm not real fiery when I you know, teach, but sometimes when I start talking about this stuff, I want to like, I don't know, run around the building. You know what I mean? It's just like, this is crazy. Okay. Here's a thought I want to tell you before we move on. In verse 11, it says, Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin. Likewise is what the Antichrist steals. He steals the reality that you have died to sin once and for all. And we're to now consider ourselves dead. Okay? Now, in the least, that scripture says, Thus also, as for you, be constantly counting upon the fact that on the one hand, you are those who have been separated from the sinful nature, and on the other hand, you are living ones with respect to God. Stop, therefore, allowing the sinful nature to reign as king in your mortal body with a view to obeying its passionate cravings. Count on the fact that you have been separated from sin. Have you all done that? I've never done that. That's, you know, hey, I've been separated from you. Go away. You know what I mean? That's crazy. We were divorced. <laughs> I served those papers a long time ago, buddy. All right. Colossians 2.11. Man, man, man. I'm going to show you all a secret with the religious spirit. Okay? I like exposing demons and how they work. Now, in him, Colossians 2.11, you were also crucified with the circumcision made without hands. By putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. And you being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he's made us alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Now here's the crazy part. Having wiped out the certificate of debt, the handwriting of requirements that was against us and hostile to us. He's taken it out of the way. He's nailed it to the cross, having disarmed principalities and powers. He made a public spectacle over them, triumphing over them in it, so let no one judge you. The law is the ammunition of principalities and powers. See, principalities and powers, that's the same word that's in Ephesians 6, 12, is it? We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, you know, principalities and powers, we don't wrestle against blood, blah, 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 okay? It is demonic entities, fallen angels. When he took the law, he said, oh, okay, you're using this, all right. Clink, 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 nailed it to the cross, right? He disarmed them. They now have nothing to accuse us with. So they use the Christians at gospel by our way. But you know what I mean? They have no weapons unless you believe the lie that you have to do certain things in order to please God. When you come back under the law, can't eat pork, can't eat lobster, that's not clean meat, have to obey the Sabbath, blah, 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 blah. You know, it's an internal uh, law, you know, to keep the Sabbath. That's forever, right? And you start coming with these rules and these external things to control external be or inward behavior. When you come back under that, you're taking the handwriting that was against you and you're handing it over to the enemy. Because the Bible says that if you keep, or if you break one law, you've broken all of them. And who would want to go back to that anyway? I had one person say, well, we have to keep the law. I said, okay, well, when was the last time your kid was disrespectful and cursed you? Well, I mean, you know, well, you should sell him to death. <laughs> You know how stupid it is? It's stupid. Let's follow it to its logical conclusion. You know? Ask an adulteress or adulterer that they're under the law. Well, you should be dead too. Have you ever said uh, the Lord's name in vain? There you go. 
You know what I mean? He, this is crazy. It says he exposed them, okay? This is the original language, as shattered, empty, and defeated in his final glorious triumphant act. Shattered, empty, and defeated, guys. So why does the church, oh, it's the word Satan. I hear you. <laughs> Have y'all noticed people like that? Acts 10.38. That reminds me. <laughs> All of a sudden, I've read the scripture. Okay, Jesus Christ, anointed of God, who went about doing good and healing all those oppressed of the devil. Okay? Now, the Lord was talking to me the other day when I was driving. And he said, one deception that's entered my church is they ignore the demonic. If someone has an emotional problem, they need counseling. Okay? Well, if you tell someone they have a demon, they might get offended. Okay, well, then let them keep their demon. You know what I mean? If you're going to get offended because someone wants to tell you that you might have a demon, then you can keep it. And so I've had people like uh, that when I was sick, they said, well, have you, you know, have you had deliverance from the spirit of infirmity? Yeah, but let's do it again. <laughs> you know? Maybe I didn't get it all. I don't know. You go up to some people and say, well, have you ever thought that maybe you got a spirit of infirmity? Can I pray for you? What are you saying? I got a demon? <laughs> Possibly. One's manifesting right now. You know what I mean? <laughs> and so we take in the demonic out, right? And so the Lord told me, he said, you know, it's true that not every tree or bush has a demon under it, but quite a few do. So he said, this is what the religious spirit has done. If you deny or ignore the existence of the demonic, how are you supposed to go about healing? If you talk to a lot of the great healing ministers, they will tell you that they're finding over 90% of the people have a demon spirit attacking their body. Yes. Now, not always, but that's sometimes the case. He was anointed by the Holy Ghost to go about doing good and healing those oppressed of the devil. How can you do good if you deny the presence of a demonic influence tormenting a person? How can you destroy the works of the devil? If you don't believe that they exist. Mm -hmm. And for sure how can you do it. If you're scared of them. Mm -hmm. They are shattered. Yep. They're empty. And they're defeated. Is that not crazy? And let's go a step further. I just want to punch some stuff in the face. You know what I'm saying? Do any of you fear wrecks or anything like that? You know that maybe. I, you never know if you have tomorrow. <laughs> I've heard religious leaders say that. God's sovereign, you never know. You could be dead tomorrow. No, I can't. Because the Bible tells me that I'll have 75 plus years at least. And I'm going after the Old Testament standard of 120 years strong. Right? I believe in the divine protection of God. However, the Lord showed me a little bit of fear. I'm the type of person that when I travel and I drive my car, I'm good. I don't worry about, you know, getting robbed. I don't worry about getting wrecked. I don't worry about any of that, you know. I'm in control. Right? Okay? Well, when me and Mike went to Pensacola, him being a man, he get to me, he brought behind cars. And I started having this flash of when I was with my dad, and we, in this truck, rear-ended, or almost rear-ended this vehicle in the opposite lane in Barstow, California. And so the truck that did it was empty, and he came across into our lane and almost knocked us off of a, a, a cliff thing. And, and so I have flashes of that, and I'm like, man. And I told Mike, I was with my dad once, you know, and he was as close as you know, that truck was probably as close as you are to this car. <laughs> and I don't mind, I'm not a whole 18 hours. <laughs> and so I was in my prayer time, and the Lord was reminding me of the trip, and I'm like, man, Kind of weird, you know. I mean, either I believe you protect or not. I mean, you know. Of course, if people are stupid, I'm not saying you are, but you know, if people are stupid, they might get us in trouble. But he wasn't in any way putting us in trouble, right? So I was like, what's that fear? You know, what's what is that from? And he reminded me of something. When I was in a car seat, little, I remember 
I can bring up the memory of this white pickup running a stop sign and smashing into the side of my dad's uh, it's 1965, 66 GTO, black with a, you know, cool bird on the top. Anyway, I remember that happening, and I don't remember, but um, they tell me that my seat went to the floorboard, you know, because back then you didn't have to put even the babies in car seats, but she did to protect me, but she didn't, you know, staple, or buckle the staple, <laughs> buckle me in, right? I remember that, and the Lord said, that's the root. That right there, that's where that came in. I didn't even tell you, did I, Mike? There you go. So now I know where the root is. So the next time we travel, Mike, are you getting pink close to those cars? <laughs> Mike, are you speeding? Where are you going? Speed limit 75. <laughs> I do that the whole time. But if you don't believe in something, get to the root of where it ended. You know what I mean? So God protects us all the time. And if you have a pause on that, I need to find out why you don't believe it. Okay? I'm not sure what God was doing after that accident. He was almost consistently doing it all the time we passed by that accident. He'd say, ooh, you know, you could see it again. And the other day, I just like, I had it up to hear from hearing it. I said, get over it, man. I said, you're here. <laughs> you're here. It's the now. I said, just get over it. What I usually do, and this might help you guys, if you have trauma, um, I break the power of the trauma. And I bind any demons that have been assigned to that trauma to carry it out, to carry out the memories and negative thing. I'll bind all those spirits and command them to go to dry places. <clears throat> so, because with trauma, you need to be healed. We do. Can't okay. just, like, get over Mom, how's your head? Do you want prayer? It's fine. Who's having headaches? Hmm? Good. Well, that's, you know, makes it easy for me. Yeah. All right. Does anybody have any questions or any thoughts? Because I know some of it's kind of like, what, what are you saying? Is Jesus God or not? You know, so you all believe in all that weird cherry chain saying that Jesus wasn't God. Yeah, you know, I don't want that to happen. But do you all have any questions or anything that you want to share? Okay. Well, let me pray for you. And I'm also going to pray for you before I do that. I want to show you guys a key <clears throat> before we do the offering. This, I was like, Lord, you know, I just really wanted to stay focused on this. And so I didn't want, you know, too much of a download. Okay. Matthew 17, 24 through 27. Let's read that real quick. And now I'll pray over us concerning the word tonight and uh, the offer. And by the way, um, me and Mike have been feeling uh, that there's going to be significant growth. <clears throat> and so we're asking for wisdom as far as uh, the finances and how much to you know, set aside just different things. Because we won't always have this room, you know, and, uh, and we just want to be wise in the steps we take, you know. And I already told uh, people I don't want a church building. No, 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 no. I want, I actually had a vision years ago, it was a, it was a metal building. It looked like a warehouse. And you had that dream a long time ago of a warehouse, too. I think it was tied into it. Um, so what if God gives you a church building? I'll tear it down and build a box. <laughs> Made out of metal. <laughs> I was joking with Elizabeth. I said, yeah, I got to a church building and we'll have a, a pastor parking sign, you know. So we'll put Dr. What was the word? Apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, <laughs> Sherry. That's the name of the Yeah, wear a suit. I'm teasing, guys. I'm teasing. Okay. So, Matthew 17, 24. When they come to Capernaum, Capernaum, those who received the tem temple tax came to Peter and said, Does your teacher not pay the temple tax? He said, Yeah, of course. And then when he came into the house, Jesus anticipated him. Okay, so he knew that something was up, right? He said, What do you think, Simon? From whom do the king 
kings of the earth take customs or taxes from their sons or from strangers? And Peter said, him from strangers. And he said, and then the sons are free. Nevertheless, lest we offend them, go to the sea, cast in the hook, take the fish that comes up first, and you, when you open its mouth, you'll find a piece of money. Take that and pay it for me and you. Now, I like how he's kind of pulling on Peter's leg. Because Peter's like, oh, yeah, of course we pay taxes. Do we pay taxes? <laughs> you know, like, I, I'm not sure about the answer correctly. You know. So he's kind of pulling on his leg. Well, the son, which I am, should not pay taxes, but let's not offend. But what I'm going to point out to you guys is the strategy that God gave him to get the money. See, if you rely solely on your paycheck, you won't hear the strategies he has for you to make money. Do you know every business I've owned came as a father? Like one day, when Kim was, I think, six years old, I sat on the couch that I got from my grandma that you know, everything we had was used, you know? And I'm sitting on there, and I'm like, you know, learning how to use a computer is really hard. I wish there was, like, someone that could teach people how to use computers. And then the Holy Spirit said, well, why don't you? Okay. I started that in 1998, still doing it. It was like when God told me to apply for scholarships. He kept saying it, too. He was like, apply for scholarships. And Elizabeth, scholarship. There's no I got two out of the three I applied for. Mm-hmm. We have to listen to those ideas. And, and not dismiss them. And even if you get them like in your prayer time, don't dismiss them. You know, write them down. And then here's a couple other things you need to be careful with. When you get a business strategy, start acting toward it. Okay? Or if you get an idea of where some provision might come from, act toward it. Because if you wait too long, guess what? It'll go to someone else. Years ago, this guy said that God told him that he gives all inventions to his people first. But he has found the world has more faith to do it than his, his believers. And so, when you get the strategy, when you get the idea, write it down, and then it's timing. Research. You know, do what you need to do to get everything in order, and then open your doors. And what the Lord has done with me is actually, accidentally, I have fallen into things. Like, when I was researching my computer business, I was researching and researching what to do and getting everything in order, and I guess the Lord thought that it was taking a little bit too long. So I had to go see the doctor. He says, what do you do for a living? I said, I teach people how to use computers. How do you open my doors? He said, oh, I need that one. Can you come to my house? I can come, yeah, this week at this time. Okay. And that was my first client. And no advertising, no nothing. All of a sudden, I had clients. Is that not crazy? So I want to pray for you guys because the way you get strategies is speaking in your heavenly language, listening, and looking for opportunity where you're like, it lights up to you. Does that make sense? It's like you're talking to someone, bam. And another thing is the Holy Spirit will keep repeating it to you over and over and over. Okay? So if that keeps happening, it's something you need to do. And also, the Word has taught me, be cautious in who you share it with. And the timing. Believe it or not, guys, there are even Christians that will still a good business idea. Okay? But you don't want to give the enemy ammunition before you have to. When you begin sharing your idea, he begins resisting. Okay? And so you want to make sure it's a proper timing. So seek advice, seek counsel, but do it in the proper timing. Uh, strategy and timing that he shows you. Does that make sense to you guys? So I'm going to pray for you. Father, we thank you so much that your son not only nailed the handwriting of requirements against us to the cross, but then he openly shamed the principalities and powers by displaying them as shattered, empty, and defeated. So Father, I ask that you anoint us with the Holy Ghost. And that we can go about doing good, healing those oppressed of the devil. I ask that you help us understand beyond a shadow of a doubt we died once to sin. Now all we got to do is get our mind to come into agreement, our heart to respond with faith that you've put in there, and be as Christ was in this earth. So Father, I break the power of every single doctrine of demon that has been spread and perpetuated through the Antichrist and religious spirit 
that has kept us down, that has oppressed us, that has stolen vision, that has stolen identity from us. And I tear down that mindset and that stronghold and I take it captive to the captivity and the obedience of Jesus Christ. And Father, I ask that our eyes just be opened up to a whole new realm of what it means to be yours. And Father, I also pray that we begin to understand that a little faith is enough to get started. And whenever circumstances and situations come against us, we'll just kick in some patience. And we won't listen to the bad reports. We won't look at the bad circumstances. And we will choose to believe. And so, Father, I also ask that you impart to everyone in this place a strategy. Where are the fish with the provision? Show them exactly how to attain the provision. How um, long they should prepare. Where it's at. Who they should speak with. All of those details, Father. And I ask that you let them know when to act, when to keep it hidden, and everything that's needed in order to be successful. And Father, I also break the ungodly reliance upon the paycheck. And Father, I ask that you shift their hearts to the fact that you are their source and that you can go way beyond hours earned. And so Father, we also ask that our resources stretch and last beyond what they should Laundry soap lasts longer. Dish soap, toilet paper. We're all, we need, Father, to live every day food that somehow it just supernaturally doesn't run out as quick. And so we thank you for your provision. We thank you for your power. We thank you that the King of Kings lives in us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys. So if anybody's going, we got one more person.